Coming up next, a mistrial in the Newlander case. We'll have reactions from both sides, including the Newlander children. Then the latest on the crash of Flight 587. We're going to tell you what investigators have learned from the black boxes. A local father and Little League coach was the pilot on board that plane. We'll talk to those who knew him. Warm temperatures are moving in. Your five-day forecast in about 10 minutes. And foods that boost your brain power. Philadelphia's WB17 News starts right now. This is Philadelphia's WB17 News. At this point, I have no intention of asking you to resume deliberations because I think that at this point it would be fruitless. The judge in the Newlander murder case declares a mistrial. After seven days of deliberations, the jury could not come to a verdict. The rabbi's fate is still up in the air. And good evening, I'm Mike Darden. And I'm Tony Yates. Seven years after the murder of Carol Newlander, there is still no ruling tonight on her husband's guilt or innocence. For the second time since they began deliberating, the jury today sent the judge a note saying they were hopelessly deadlocked. And the judge agreed. Tina Kim has been covering the trial since it began. She's live now at the Camden County Hort Courthouse with more on today's developments. Tina. Tony, the jurors were considering three charges against Rabbi Fred Newlander. Capital murder, felony murder, and conspiracy to commit murder. And the only thing that the six men and six women could agree on is that they could not reach a unanimous decision on any of the charges. He used to preach about heaven and hell. Tonight, Rabbi Fred Newlander is in limbo. After nearly 40 witnesses, 60-some exhibits, 11 days of testimony, 44 hours of jury deliberation, and seven years of uncertainty, his capital murder trial ended without a verdict. I am going to declare a mistrial, and I do hereby declare a mistrial. The jury, I find, is at a complete standstill. You are deadlocked, and no further amount of time could ever be productive. A hung jury in a case that has been hanging over the 60-year-old father of three since November 1st, 1994, the day he found his wife Carol beaten to death in their Cherry Hill home. The rabbi was facing the death penalty if convicted of paying for her murder, which his friend and confessed hitman Len Jenoff testified did happen. He, I think, has the same reaction that we had. He's certainly relieved. Uh, but he's disappointed that he wasn't uh, completely cleared. In the pursuit of justice, it is necessary to be steadfast, it is necessary to be diligent, and it is necessary in some instances to be patient. Assistant Prosecutor James Lynch also expressed disappointment and determination as he and his boss, Lee Salmon, promised Camden County will retry the case regardless of cause. Our obligation is to do the right thing each and every time. Newlander's children and in-laws walked out of the courthouse without expression and without a guarantee a second trial would end differently, as his friend of hitman Len Jenoff pointed out. To put someone to death, possibly, on the testimony of Lenny Jenoff is a sin. And that's because, as the trial proved, Len Jenoff is a habitual liar. After she declared a mistrial, the judge reminded jurors about her court order preventing reporters from contacting any of the jurors, and she even gave the six men and six women a central communications number to call if any of them is approached by the media. Tomorrow, defense attorneys say they will ask the judge to schedule a bail hearing for the end of the week to determine if the rabbi can get out on bail. And what's next on the horizon now after this mistrial? Well, that story's coming up at 10.30. Live at the Camden County Courthouse, I'm Tina Kim, Philadelphia's WB17. Back to you, Mike. Okay, Tina, thank you very much. And at the center of it all are the Newlander children and the family of murder victim Carol Newlander. After the judge's decision, they spoke out. Byron Scott in the newsroom now. He's got family reaction. Byron? Well, Mike, the family was obviously disappointed with the mistrial, and now they say they are focusing on the retrial. We will continue to support the prosecutor until uh, justice is served. It was not an easy moment for Carol Newlander's brother. He and other members of her family have been hoping deeply for the conviction of Rabbi Fred Newlander. It would have brought a sense of closure. Some things um, take a little longer to accomplish than others. It has been seven long years for the family, and they have grown accustomed to mustering up their strength at key moments. This was one of them. The healing process for us will continue. It was delayed somewhat, but it will continue. Carol's brother and her daughter, Rebecca, addressed the media about an hour after Judge Linda Baxter declared a mistrial. They thanked everyone involved in the case. I speak for all of us when I say that we're very appreciative, and uh, we couldn't have been able to go through this without them. Her spirit, her grace, her laughter, her loyalty, her deep and abiding sense of family will be with us always. And as difficult as it may be, they support and are looking forward to the retrial. Camden County Prosecutor Lee Solomon has already made that decision. 
And then the family spoke of Rabbi Newlander. As far as uh, Fred Newlander is concerned, he gets to sit alone with his arrogance and wonder whether or not there are 12 other people somewhere who will fail to recognize the truth. And while no one knows how quite it will turn out, uh, they are confident, they say, the family, that there will be a conviction. Also, we'll have more on local reaction tonight at about 10.30. Live in the newsroom, I'm Byron Scott Mike. Okay, Byron, mm -hmm. thank you. And as we mentioned, today's news probably means that the case will be tried again. We want to know what you think about that. In tonight's Tell Us at 10, we are asking you if the rabbi should face another murder trial. Log on now and vote at WB17.com. And the results are coming up for you later in the newscast. More is now known about the final seconds of American Airlines Flight 587. The cockpit voice recorder shows the pilots heard rattling noises, then quickly started to lose control of the plane. The problem started less than two minutes after takeoff from JFK Airport yesterday. Seconds later, the plane made a nosedive into a residential area in the Rockaway section of Queens. Today, investigators recovered the second black box, the flight data recorder. Investigators have not yet ruled out sabotage, but they do believe it was an accident perhaps a mechanical failure with the engines. There was no evidence on initial inspection of the engines uh, of any kind of foreign object damage, including a bird. The plane was headed for the Dominican Republic. All 260 people on board the Airbus were killed. Several people on the ground are still missing. And the Queens community where the plane went down is trying to cope with this latest tragedy. That neighborhood lost more than 70 people in the World Trade Center disaster, and at least five of their neighbors are still missing after yesterday's crash. Allison Harmon is live in Rockaway tonight with more on that. Allison. That's right, Tony. This Rockaway community of Bell Harbor is trying to return to some sense of normalcy, despite the fact, the grim reality, that just a few blocks behind the emergency crews continue to dig through the wreckage. This morning, shops reopened, churches and synagogues actually held special services, and school children went back to school, just trying to understand how at 9.17 yesterday morning, Flight 587 fell out of the sky. Phyllis Pond is holding tight to her son. A whole school day apart, and Phyllis says she'd rather have...